our you know family traditions. And so when you know this tradition is simplified to just like an online you know number transaction, that just sounds very simple and very I don't know how to feel about it. Like is that really what you experience right now in in China in mainland China? So according to my own experience, if I were be able to at home during the film festival, they will definitely do it in the traditional way, sit down together and uh, distribute the red pocket, distribute the money to every kid. But, you know, like I study abroad in the United States right now, so I, I'm not able to go back to China. So my relatives will send me money from WeChat. I wish my pa- my relatives can do that. They just give the red packets to my brother and then like he kept it for me. <laughs> And I'm kind of amazed by how WeChat bring like people in the whole family together because when looking at other aspects of life, we found old people always going slower uh, when <laughs> accepting like technology. They're not and... as receptive. <laughs> yes, but uh, if you're looking at the combination between like this very traditional way of communication among families and how it brings these old and middle-aged people into this system. I will find, like, they make make them very comfortable, like, accepting these things. Yeah, that leads me to another question. I'm assuming that in uh, rural areas of China, people don't really have access to smartphones or internet service or actually, like, good internet connectivity. So how does that affect their use of this uh, mobile payment, especially when a lot of people in the city area, like, a lot of them use online payment methods, and then, like, business owners actually don't accept cash anymore sometimes. So what 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 do you have on this? The real thing is that sometimes people enter into this system just because they have no choice. And cashless discrimination is still a problem for people, especially older people who prefer to use cash. And what do you mean by cash discrimination? Well, cash discrimination is when business refuse to take cash from their customers. And it's becoming a bigger problem in China. Well, according to a survey conducted by People's Bank of China in 2017, like 37% of customers were refused at least once when they tried to pay with cash. And this shows that if you don't have access to a mobile wallet, you really like you can be excluded from the economy in certain ways. So I want to add one of my example. So every year when back to China, I, I go to the train station to take the bullet train. I found each year there were fewer and fewer people who will buy the train tickets at the train station. So I went online to do some research and I saw a news which is really heartbreaking. Every year before the spring festival, there are lots of migrant workers from the big cities who will go back to their villages to celebrate the festival with their family. So they will buy tickets at the train station. And there are lots of old people like who are over 50 or 60 from oh. the rural area. And it's so hard for them to buy the tickets. Why? Because as I mentioned earlier, that young people from rural China, most of them have access to mobile payment by their cell phones. But those old people do not know how to use cell phone to do the online shopping to buy tickets. It just sold out in just 20 seconds. Oh. You know, I, I read the news and you said there's one very old guy and he need down to the real way stop to say, can you just sell me one ticket? So I think that's one downside of mobile payment. We should think about how we can include those people who do not have access to mobile payment. I have something to add to Bing's point of mobile payment apps that are leaving the elderly behind, especially when like these mobile payment apps, like they have more and more functions nowadays. Like just like what Sheen was talking about, people were lending money, like the peer to peer lending systems, they're all online as well. And then like all the online shopping, paying utility bills. So like when the payment system is expanding its functions so widely and so fast, it's actually like leaving the elderly behind uh, much more seriously. And so Especially when like the older people are the ones like who are more in need of these kind of services because of most of them are living alone, especially in rural areas. They have these like left behind elderly situation there. Definitely this is one of the concerns that the government should, you know, tackle on. And I think the problem here is that the spread of cashless payment is not merely driven by people's need and that's why people like feel like they they're pushed into this system. Large companies and governments are they are doing things for their own benefit, or like the country is <laughs> going digital, but uh, whether people feel comfortable in this system is another story. 
I believe that when you said that the big players in the government are like really advocating this technology, it's actually for the benefit of you know like quickening up transactions and like lowering transaction costs. And so like there's definitely like an economic uh, benefits to it. But then like I think like those big players need to think about you know the the downsides of the system and like how they can be more inclusive and like try to reach elderly and poor people who don't have smartphones or like a- access to good internet connectivity. Thank you, our team, for conducting all these in-person and Skype interviews. They're really inspiring and like really bring us to think about the issue or like the the phenomenon from different perspectives and different levels. And so, really good job. I just want to end this episode with one story uh, to impress our audience and like tell you guys how popular this QR code trend is or like this online payment system is. So, in 2017, the government of uh, Xilingshui they planted a lot of trees in a region of the area. The trees are all like identical in height and they form like a big QR code picture. If people are taking a bird's eye view picture of this like of the area of the trees, it's actually a big QR code. And when they scan the QR code, it leads the users to the tourism website of the government. It's just you know one of the creative ways that the government used to promote tourism as well. So I guess this is the end of the episode. Thank you, our team, and thank you for listening and tuning in. Please rate, share, and subscribe for Just China and University of Chicago Public Policy Podcast, UC3P. I'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Hi, this is Jason Zukis, the host of Have You Heard? The UC3P News Quiz, a podcast where we quiz University of Chicago students on recent entertaining news stories. You can find us on any podcast platform by searching for Have You Heard? UC3P and can find out more about our upcoming live shows at facebook.com slash hyhnewsquiz. Thanks for listening.